Welcome back everybody, my name is Austin and welcome to the Power Stoked YouTube channel. You guys are new to the channel, thank you for swinging by, thank you for checking out this video, I know why you're here. And uh, to everybody that is back, as you guys know in the last video I sold the Power Stoked, we were no longer a diesel channel. Power Stoked stands for more than just a Power Stoke, obviously. Stoked about power, anything that's got horsepower or torque or anything, I know it's cheesy, but that's part of YouTube, you got a cheesy name, come on. So. This is the new era. I'm very excited to show you guys the new car on the channel. You already know what it is by the title. Let me grab the key and let's do a cool montage. So I present to you guys the cheapest Camaro 2SS with the RS package in the country. So when I set out to buy this car, I honestly was really looking at the 2014s and 15s. I really like that body style. But then magically on the beautiful website of Auto Trader, I found this, what I have nicknamed the crackhead Camaro. So I'll take you around and show you all the faults of this car. There's quite a few issues. Now, notably, one was the sunroof. When I went to go look at it and buy it, the sunroof was stuck open. Now, I don't know who tried to fix it in the beginning, but let me tell you what, they did a horrible job. So, my guess is there was glass all over the inside of this car. My guess is somebody broke this sunroof to get in and then replaced it with a new one, but just basically set it on top of the arm, screwed it in, and that was it. So, nothing was actually hooked up. When I pulled this off, plastic pieces were falling out, clips weren't even on right, nothing was done properly. So, I took it all apart. Fixed it in about half hour, done. So I was able to pick up this Camaro for a mind boggling $8,000. Now that's really impressive considering what's under the hood. If you guys didn't notice in the montage, it is a six speed manual. Oh yeah, big guy fits in here just fine. I got the seat all the way back and all the way down and it's actually really comfortable. These seats, these leather SS seats are incredible. Now I would show you the interior beforehand, but it's nice and clean now. <laughs> Honestly, when you sat in this car when I first got it, you would have probably gotten hepatitis. So we got the car on a Saturday, and the following Sunday we dropped it off at a detailer, and he had it for four days, five days, five days. I wanted him to focus mainly on the interior because it was absolutely disgusting. I'll put all the photos here so you guys can look at them while I'm talking. The carpets were dirty, muddy, there was glass on the floor. Um, my driver's seat has a small rip in it, so that's minor. The center console had moss, crumbs, mold, like just disgusting. This car was gross. It also had this awful shift knob. Let me show you. I mean, come on, that is absolutely terrible. Look at that thing, that is awful and disgusting. Look at, and also to note is the old shift boot that has a hole burned right through it. Interesting. Oh, but everybody, the problems don't stop there. Now, I wish I would've gotten photos or video before, but it was not safe to drive. The driver's side front tire here, I have new tires. These are the RS wheels that have been spray painted black and curved about a million times. So that's that's cool. But the front tire here had a bubble in the sidewall about that big and the passenger side rear tire was on wires. So immediately I had to go put brand new tires on it. Thank you Costco, shout out, uh, sponsor me. But I got some Firestone tires on here for now because these are gonna be my winter tires. So I just went with an all season. Come spring, hopefully I'll get a nice set of wheels and tires for this bad boy and it's gonna be a uh, so to go along with the story of the wheels and tires, when you get in the car when I first got it, every light on the dash was on. Sounds like a terrible country song. We had just about every single light on on the dash. TPMS, Stabilitrack, traction control, all these lights were on and weren't going away. You couldn't clear the center screen, it just said service Stabilitrack. And I chalked it down to the ABS sensors, right? Oh, and the ABS light was on. <laughs> Surprise. So I chucked it down to the sensors and ordered those, went and got the new tires. All those lights are now off, so there was something with the tires that was throwing the car off. The only light that is now on the dash is the check engine. So those coats have been red, it's like a heat circuit sensor or something like that, but it's tied to the rear of two sensors, which are on the car, but this car is straight piped, so they're not reading right. Now, that is an easily fixable issue. I just need to go get the car tuned, but I'm gonna wait until I get a cam or supercharger or something like that, so I can just go get it tuned at once and then have them tune those coats out. But other than that, this car has been amazing, and there's one caveat I have yet to tell you guys. I didn't know how to drive a manual. So when we got the car, my wife was the one that drove it home, and yesterday, I took the car out for a rip, drove all around, I think I put about 100 miles on it, and I'm getting better. I <laughs> I would have uh, brought you guys along, but it was pretty embarrassing. I'm still learning. Um, my wife, she had a Mazda Speed 3. I learned in that, 
but this car is a whole different beast and I obviously wasn't very good at driving the Mazda, but now I've got my own and I'm forcing myself to learn. That's another reason why I got rid of the truck. It was an auto. I've always wanted to learn manual. I've always wanted a muscle car. I sold the truck, had the money, found this, and was like, let's just go for it. Oh, and with it being the six speed, those of you that know these Camaros, know what's under the hood. So first thing you guys might notice is the terrible uh, filter that was just thrown on the end of the stock intake and they left the box here. I got a cold air intake that I'm gonna be getting for this. It's gonna be coming hopefully soon. But that, my friends, is a 6.2 liter LS3. So for those of you that don't know, the automatics of these cars came with an L99, which I think is very similar. But I know a lot of the guys that run the automatic cars will actually swap in the LS3 after they blow up their L99. I'm very excited about this because this gives me a lot of options, superchargers, turbo kits, everything. I mean, everybody wants an LS, right? I finally have my first one and this thing ripped. So I'm very, very excited about this car. Now, let me tell you guys about the RS package. So as I said, this is the 2SS. So the 2SS is the optioned up model of the SS. So this has got the leather seats, the Boston Dynamics, audio, the sunroof, all those options. But this one has the RS appearance package. So these have obviously been tinted a little bit more, but the factory taillights on the RS come tinted from the factory. And we get a sweet red SS badge versus just a white one. So along with the taillights and the red badges, we get these special 20 inch wheels that come on a staggered setup. We got 20 by eights on the front, 20 by nines on the rear. And with the RS package, we get these HID halo headlights from the factory. Now, these are awesome headlights and I was super stoked to find out that I had them until I saw this. Over here on the driver's side, if you guys look really close, somebody drilled a hole in it to drain water. So, so if you guys know anybody with these headlights, they're $500 for one side. So not only was there water in there at some point, the bulb was dead, so I was like, okay. I ordered some new HIDs, popped the hood, pulled the cover off, pulled the bulb out. The plug and the ballast were melted together. I have a new wire coming for the ballast. Fingers crossed that it works and I can actually get a headlight in here so it's you know legal to drive at night and I don't get pulled over. It's already obnoxiously loud. So enough with the complaining about the headlights. We got the RS package on this, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of cool options that I was very excited to find out. With the interior being bad, the headlight being drilled out, every plastic piece inside being popped off um, because I'm assuming there was drugs in this car. <laughs> the body is in horrible shape. As you can see, we have this nice big gash down the side that's kind of creased into the rear fender. And what sucks is this fender goes up and over all the way over to the hood. So I'm hoping a body shop can handle that for me. And then over here, I mean, we got our like little dents and dings. We got this one here. The paint is scratched to hell. You guys can kind of see that in the video there. Somebody put something corrosive on the hood right here. So this is all bubbled. This has been washed. And then on this side, you can see this has been like painted over or something, but that's a huge gash. And then this side isn't too bad. There's a nice dent in the door here. I mean, the body of the car could be better, but honestly, two new front fenders, 400 bucks, and they're pre-primed, which means I can wrap them. The rear fender is my big worry, and that passenger door, honestly. Everything else is pretty decent shape. I can work with it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Mechanically, this car is healthy. That's all I could ask for. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. I hope you guys all are having a wonderful day, week, month, year, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Extracting the Camaro, and I'm gonna show you what the wastewater looks like. Inside the tank, and here comes the plug.